Hello, in this demo I will show how to consume a web service and build a COBOL program that invokes this web service. This DV Studio can build COBOL PL1 and natural code. Since COBOL is more common, in this demo I will show just the COBOL generation piece. PL1 and natural are similar so we will not be looking at that. This tool also creates the JCL to compiling and run the batch program. When the batch job runs, it uses our WSC API to talk to Shadow Server. Shadow Server at that point will take the raw data, build the sub request, and invoke the web service. When Shadow receives the data back, it will take the sub response, parse and rebuild this response storage for the COBOL program. So, next step is to locate a web service that we can use. Uh, for this demo, I already prepared a web service to use. The web service I have is in the form of a, a file that I save it. Uh, previously. This web service contains multiple operations. Uh, before we create the WSC project, let's attempt to run the web service just to make sure that it works. So to, to do that, you need a tool, a uh, web service tool. Shadow Studio that you're looking at here, uh, we provide a tool called Web Service Tester that can run any web service, uh, whether it's a web service that's generated by Shadow or a web service from a, a .NET program, anything other than Shadow. Um, so first step to testing this web service is we have to consume it. And to do that, there's an option here on the web service tester to add new wisdom. Just click on that and enter the location of the wisdom. That location is here. Copy and just paste it here followed by the file name. Uh, the file name is country info services .wisdom. Copy that, paste and just hit OK. That will bring up the list of operations. For this demo, we will try to test the country currency. To make sure it works, let's try to uh, run the web, web service. Um, the entry would be the country code, so US. Um, I hit F5 here to run it. We get the response back. It shows that um, US currency name is dollars. Uh, let's try another country, Malaysia, for example. Uh, M Y R hit F5 to run and we get back ringgits. So the Malaysian currency is ringgits. So we know this web service works. I'm not too sure about the others. Uh, we don't maintain this web service. So, but we know country currency works. So let's use that for our demo. Before we start with the demo, we need to first make sure we have the correct preference. In my setup, I don't have all the preference set up, but in in most customer situation, you, this needs to be set up so that um, you have because it's not it's not every day that you can just get this information. Um, this is this is more like a one-time setup, so. Typically, a developer would work with the mainframe system programmer to get all this information. Uh, these are the data sets on the mainframe, where they install these services, what are the COBOL libraries, uh, the source library. So once you have all this information, uh, next step is to save it. So every time you generate a new project, it will use these preferences. So to create a new project, um, just on the left pager, select WSC and new project. 
uh, give this project a name, we'll call it demo1. Um, everything else can remain the same. Hit next. The, this next screen shows different options. Um, can consume the whistle using the file, which is what we're going to do. And there's option to put in the URL of the whistle, and also option to consume a shadow web service. In this case, we've, we're consuming a web service through a file. So click Browse. We'll locate that file. It's CDLV Whistle. And this is the Whistle that we want to run. Just select that. And at that time, you'll parse that Whistle and find the binding information. For this Whistle, there's only one. Um, once you're done, just hit Finish. At that point, we will parse through the uh, uh, the content and we build the Cobra program, the JCL, everything that you need to um, run the program. So let's see, the project is completed. Uh, we see this is this is the f the main screen of WSC project. In my case, uh, my preference is not set up, so you see all this your dot your dot. Um, so so this is not valid data set. But I will get to. Um, I'll show how you, we can copy this from another project that already have the settings. So um, since we're not doing PL1, we'll just uncheck this. We'll uncheck natural. And since we are testing the country currency operation, we'll check that country currency and remove country flag. Um, as far as this screen is concerned, the only thing missing is the configuration. So I know I have a different project that that already have the settings, um, have it open here. So I just have to go to it, and as you can see, all the settings are there already. So I want to just copy all this information. Uh, obviously, it doesn't make sense to copy one by one; it takes too long. So we have the option to copy everything into the clipboard is uh, the third button on the top here just click on that it copies into the clipboard and go back to your original project just do a paste there once you do paste you see everything get pasted there that includes the jcl and also the cobol libraries um, as far as this screen is concerned we're done so so next step is to look at the operation for that country code so we know that when when we deploy this project, it will attempt to try to execute the web service. So basically, it has it, it generates the batch program, uh, and then it also provides the JCL. You run the JCL, it invokes a program which goes to Shadow, and Shadow calls the web service, comes back, and back in the Cobol program, and you see the data. So so to to make sure that this test will work we don't want to send an empty country code right so we'll use us as the default again this is all generating cobol program and this can all change later on once the program is on the mainframe so us um, and there's nothing else to change there's only one input so at this point save and after you save generate the artifacts that's basically generating all the programs so now that we is done um, you can switch over to the client tab here you see server client server means whatever you see is on the server client means everything on your local machine so we click client once you do that the, your current project will be highlighted so you see all these JCL, COBOL program, these are all generated when you actually hit the uh, generate artifacts on the top right hand side here. So um, before I deploy, so before you deploy any of this project, if you want to make any changes, you are allowed to do that. Uh, that's the flexibility here. Like for example, the JCL, the header doesn't look right. You can change it. But after you change it, don't generate the project again, because if you do, that will override everything that you just make you just change so um, in my case I do want to make changes 
um, this is the COBOL program that it generates. Um, this Co COBOL program does three things. First, it reads the configuration file. Second, it attempts to perform, uh, to call the web service synchronously. And third, it attempts to run it asynchronously. So, um, for this, the for the purpose of this demo, we don't really need to look at asynchronous. And Andy can explain a little bit more about asynchronous, but uh, we'll comment it out so that it doesn't try to execute asynchronous. We'll just run the synchronous test. So I just make the change here. So I will go ahead and Control S to save. So I just save the program. Um, if I go back to the WSC project, um, if I go and click Generate again, that change will be gone. But we're not going to do that. We'll just leave it the way it is. We will just go ahead and deploy the project to the mainframe. See, I make sure my target server is correct. And these are all the files that will be deployed to the server. You have option to also uncheck some of the files. Um, some files probably you already have and you don't want to change. Or maybe the JCL. Sometimes um, you've make you've deployed the JCL to the mainframe and you make changes to the JCL uh, because there's some stuff that doesn't match that requires to change. But once you do that, the JCL typically is the same. It doesn't change much. So in some cases, you want to just uncheck the JCL so it, it doesn't get uploaded again to the mainframe. So you can just uncheck this. But in my case, this is the first time we're running this demo project, so I will go ahead and deploy everything. So click on Deploy tab and just check everything's good. If you want to change the member prefix, you could. We generate this member prefix based on the specific name on the whistle. So we'll keep this name. Um, there's other things that you can also change, like for example, the map name. Um, this is also pick out from the whistle. So if you don't want this name, you want to be something more unique, change this because the map name sometimes, for example, if you want to create multiple project uh, using the same whistle, but using different operation, um, you don't want one project to override the other one. So you might want to change this one a little bit. Um, so, but in this case, well, I'm just leaving it the way it is and go ahead and deploy it. So the deploy button is on the top right hand side here. It says deploy. Just click on deploy. You have the status window here to show you what's getting deployed. Uh, what it attempts to do. It's going to run. It's going to compile. JCL is going to run the program and it will download the output. You, you will be able to see the output here shortly. So we'll just let it run. Takes a while because it has to upload the file and run all the stuff and wait for the output to come back. So you can see this, um, it tells you the status, there's no errors. So to really know if everything's good, there's an output folder here on the left. This is the compile output. This is the run. So, so the compile is to compile the program, right? So the run is to actually execute the program. Uh, we can look at the compile, make sure the status is zero. So you can see here return code zero. It's good. Then the next step was to run that program. So let's see if the run is successful. Um, so yeah, it's running successful. And here we can see what data is being sent to the mainframe and what gets executed what comes back so slowly scroll down we see here um, input value so as you saw just now we use us as a default value and here it calls the uh, web service or it calls shadow first and then it goes out and call the web service here so we can see all kinds of debugging information keep going and at the end we'll see if everything's good if everything's good continue on we look for the output so you can see the output it shows dollars so it returns back whatever uh, the web sub request returns it, it parses it and it builds the output 
value so um, so let's go over to the mainframe just to double check everything so it's, so it's just now the pop-up shows successful return code zero um, so let's go to 3.4 um, this is we can double check where this stuff goes it's in the settings so demo one the USC you can see all my work source goes here so let's go visit that file so AI 38 DCV dot WSC dot source oops source um, so the project we saw that the prefix let's go back here when we deploy we saw that the prefix CNN SRCS so that's what we'll be looking for and here you see the stuff here um, so this is the program you can tell because it ends with P J is to compile the program and R is to run the program so take a look at the program edit um, so if we scroll down we should see where we actually enter um, we're actually entering the input data uh, so here see we're actually moving US to a field and then at that point we invoke the web service so let's change it out a little bit let's change this to MYR because we tested with MYR earlier so save it so um, get out of here we'll compile that program sub make sure it's good return code zero so now next step is to try to run that program we just compiled so it's it's the one that ends with a R here so we'll we'll try to execute that sub and it looks good so it says job one one four six four so let's go take a look there uh, prefix one one four six four is that last one so we'll take a look there return code zero so slowly page down we can see that uh, the input value is MYR that's what we changed just a minute ago and again all this debugging information and you see the output value being ringgit as the uh, currency name so that's it for WSC thank you